Hello, Xtraders. And in a previous video, we actually covered the trading strategy that I use. And I wanted to cover very briefly the most important steps because I want to use what has happened this week as an example of basically how everything can just go out the window. All right. And as a trader, you have to be prepared for this. So in the trading strategy that I set forth in that previous video, and I'll try to link um, that video in the description, uh, we covered basically the following uh, points. The first point or the first topic was the three realms into which you have to dive into and master as much as possible. The first one was the technical. It doesn't have to be in this order. The second one was the fundamentals, uh, and the third one was basically general rules. And <clears throat> this uh, this part is uh, is very important because these two, the technical and the fundamental, uh, might fail. Okay, um, technical is a very logic driven <clears throat> um, analysis. Fundamental is also a very logic-driven analysis, and the rules, uh, which you as a trader must incorporate into your trade strategy, um, basically are there to save you whenever these two logically defined analyses fail. Okay, So um, that is what I'm going to use as uh, the main example for today's video. So let's start with technicals. And, uh, and the technicals, and as you can clearly see, I haven't finished this presentation, but in, um, in uh, the technical analysis when we covered this in the first video, we uh, basically mentioned these four points. The trend, you must be able to identify trend. You must be able to identify SR or support and resistance levels, and there were a few ways of doing that. You must be able to identify if there are patterns in the price chart, and um, you must also be able to use indicators, learn how to use them, and more specifically, more importantly, learn what they tell you, but also what they don't tell you, okay, or what what it doesn't mean. I've heard a lot of people, uh, or you know, try to start out trading using the MACD, you know, uh, just the MACD, you know, well, whenever, you know, the MACD signals, then, oh, he jumps into the trade or vice versa. Um, that's, that's a very dangerous way to trade. Uh, and then uh, the fourth and final point, uh, which we didn't really cover in my first video, was that once you have these things <clears throat> basically, you know, mastered, then you definitely need to get into the Greeks and there's two Greeks that I will cover in this future video, which is basically Theta and Vega, uh, and uh, how those um, quickly cover, uh, you know, these uh, topics in technicals. And then we'll jump over to fundamentals, and then rules, and then we'll discuss what happened this week. Okay, so identify the trend. You obviously must be able to identify. Yes, this is a clear uptrend. You know, and then within that trend, you can find uh, choppiness. You know, as you can see. A trading channel here, choppiness from here to here, uh, but then there's a new trend forming, which is the downtrend, uh, and then uh, you must be able to identify trend, basically up, down, or chop. Uh, so beside the trend, you needed to be able to identify support levels, and we talked about swing points. We also talked about multiple touches, and the fibs. Fibs help you, and I usually add them in the end. So after I've added the swings and the multiple touches, I'll go ahead and I'll draw from the highest uh, from the all-time high to the all-time low, uh, or the 52-week high to the 52-week low. So what you do is you take, uh, as I mentioned in, in the earlier video, the next resistance higher to where you currently are, which would be right here. And then once that breaks, then resistance target one, resistance target two, and so on and so forth. Or you take the nearest uh, support below the current price, and that's your entry level. <clears throat> And then you have target price one, target price two, 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the price patterns, if you are able to find, such as this head and shoulders here. And to wrap up the technical analysis, we looked at ind indicators. We use uh, uh, simple moving averages and sometimes uh, uh, exponential moving averages as well. We use them as support and resistance. Uh, we use the MACD and the RSI to determine momentum and overbought or sold conditions. We use the volume profile, which tells you what uh, price level has had the greatest volume. And uh, we have a uh, indicator called the Neptune Trading System, uh, which is available on Xtrades to use on TradingView, uh, developed by one of our analysts. Uh, JTW over at Xtrades, and it basically gives you, you know, uh, long and short, bull and bear, and it gives you these flags and these signals that you can use uh, to identify entries and exits. Okay, so we were done with technicals, and then we moved over to fundamentals, and in fundamentals we cover these uh, four areas, and they're very important. Uh, there's market sentiment, general market sentiment. Then there's also economic data that you need to be able to understand and parse through. Uh, there's production with GDP. There's price information with CPI, PPI, and PCE. There's job less claims. Okay, uh, there's the PMI. Uh, there's <clears throat> Mortgage apps, which basically tell you uh, what you know, um, how strong the housing market is, uh, and then you can dive into specific sectors. Okay, because some sectors might be green, uh, and some sectors might turn red. And finally, you need to look at the TV news because there's rumors, there's politics, and uh, you know, uh, political decisions uh, affect different sectors in different ways. If they pass a law. Uh, that's going to affect the energy sector or the housing sector, then that is obviously going to have uh, a huge effect on tickers. The last uh, slide are uh, analyst recommendations and upgrades. All of this taken into account, uh, we developed a couple of trade plans, and you could see the trade plans or the watch lists the different analysts posted for uh, this week. You know. Um, and a lot of them were bullish. I remember that a few, quite a few uh, 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 tickers that analysts were watching were actually uh, very bullish. Uh, and then we get some economic news, right? So we got the PPI, um, uh, the ISM PPI, uh, sorry, the ISM PMI, uh, which was, and we, specifically the sector. Uh, the services uh, ISM, which mean, which is basically how did the how did prices behave in the services sector, and that was not very good. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good. It wasn't what people were expecting, and there's so many tensions right now with the China, with the Ukraine Russia conflict, and basically that can take a really good technically, okay, uh, a good technically analyzed trade plan that that you know that gives you a bullish uh, target to the upside and uh, and you were looking let's say that this was a company I believe that this is the Dow Jones but um, that's the DJIA but let's say that this was a ticker and you also had you know like very bullish market sentiment um, coming out of the weekend into the trading week and uh, you know the sector for that particular ticker was looking good and that particular ticker even had an upgrade all right uh, it's 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 very likely that both technical and fundamental analysis fundamental analysis was pointing you in the bullish direction okay but then something happens and everything comes crashing down so what are the general rules Risk management, number one. Perspectives, you have to look at it from the right perspective. You have to look at your trades from the right perspective. Types of assets that you're trading, strategies that you're using, and then platforms and tools and whatnot. So let's go over some quick risk management. The sizing of your trades is important. I'm sure you've seen the data. I'm not going to cover the specifics if you only use 1% or 5% of your trading portfolio, you know, whatever. Um, the sizing is very important. So make sure that your trading strategy covers uh, what size uh, trades you're going to use. And I'll talk about this a little bit further in a moment. Uh, but one of the important things that is related to sizing uh, is 
uh, runners. It th whatever you sized has to leave room for runners. Okay, so whatever the size of your trade uh, of your trade plan is going to be, if let's say that you decide you're only going to spend a hundred dollars a week, which means very clearly you can only lose a hundred dollars a week. That's your max loss per week. All right. So you decide that you're going to uh, take a trade for exactly $100 on Monday. If that thing goes to zero on Monday, then you're out for the rest of the trading week. You know, you're done. Do not break your rules or it's not going to work. So if you take the $100 trade on Monday and you lose, you're done for the week. You have to leave room for runners, okay? And, and what that means is that if you're going to have $100 to trade, if that's going to be your limit, then go ahead and try to find trades that allow you to get multiple contracts. And that means uh, be able to accommodate runners. All right. Number two is uh, the different perspectives. Do not use absolute values. Please focus on return percentage. If you're going to look at a trade, make sure that you're looking to get out at 15%, not at $100. Uh, there's, uh, there, I, I, I say this to people so many times during the week because, oh, but I was only up, I was only up like $50. You know, I wanted 100 or I wanted 200. No, that's not a problem of uh, not having enough return. That's a problem of you not having sized correctly. And I'll get to that really quickly in a minute here because we're almost out of time. Um, and obviously perspectives you want to make a different, you know, you want to, you definitely want to define if you want a day trade or if you want a swing trade. I'm not going to get into this because this percentage return is the one that I want to cover in more detail. Uh, of course, there's different assets, there's stocks and options. And if maybe options are not for you, you know, maybe they're very sexy and appealing concept in general, but maybe you don't have it in you at first to be an options trader because of the time factor. There is a huge uh, uh, factor working against you in making money in options, and that is time, okay, which does not occur in stocks. Uh, and then there's a lot of different strategies. Do not limit yourself to single or naked options contracts, such as buying calls and puts. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do, and we will explore these in uh, future videos. Uh, there's a lot of tools, trading platforms that you can use, uh, indicators that you can buy on different trading platforms such as TradingView, and I do not uh, uh, want to leave out the drinks. You know, uh, a lot, and, and we'll probably dedicate a, a different video for this. I use, um, you know, a drink here and there to, uh, to basically calm my nerves because I know that I'm a jittery person. So... All right, so getting back to the sizing and the risk management, which is basically what I was trying to get at when I started this video and I said, no matter what happens in technical and fundamentals, even if everything is going right, anything can throw off the market and therefore your trade, which is why you must follow rules. So let's look at uh, what I was talking about. You need to determine what kind of trader you are, okay? and if you're a more conservative, risk-averse trader, then you must be careful when you talk about or when you view your trades as being uh, as having a percentage return versus an absolute return. Why? Because it is a mistake to get one small single contract, just as it is a mistake to get one large single contract. Okay. The reason why I say this is because when you are looking, and this is where I'm going to end this video, when you are looking at a position that you have sized, if you size it too big, like $500, that's going to make you way too jittery. And you're probably going to end up getting out before the thing actually turns around and takes off. And you're going to hate yourself for it. Okay, So definitely do not go all in on just one contract that's worth $500. That's not going to work, okay? What you want to do is you want to be able to have more than one contract, okay? You want to be able to have more than one contract. So that means, why? Because you want to be able to have runners. Let's say that you get two contracts. Then the first one you get out at 15%, and then the next one, the runner, you can let it ride 
until whatever percentage you want. But make sure that you lock in profits on that first contract. And normally what you would do is instead of getting the $100 contract, get two $50 contracts and then let the first one go to, let's say, you know, 15% out of 50 would be, to multiply here, like 57, $58, okay? If you want more than $8 return on a $50 trade, don't go for a smaller contract, okay? What you want to do is you want to get more contracts of that same value. So what you want is instead of getting 2 of 50, maybe you get 10 of 50, all right? What that means is that you'll reach your 15%, and that 15% is going to be a lot more than $8, and that is what you want. That is how risk management works properly, and that's why you have to size properly, you have to leave room for runners, and it is a mistake to get small single contracts. Sometimes we get smaller contracts because they're cheaper. But the problem is that if you get a cheaper contract and you didn't look at, say, for example, the delta on that contract, which is why somewhere in here is the Greeks, okay, if you didn't look at the delta and that contract has a probability of going in the money of 10% or 15%, then basically what you did was you threw your money away. Yeah, it was cheaper. You know, it was only $10 per contract, so you were able to get 10 of them so that you are able to get a lot of runners. But guess what? That small single contract, all of those small single contracts are basically just going to go to zero. So be careful. You have to be able to determine your size, how much you're willing to risk in a week. If you're going to risk 100, then try to find trades where you can get at least two contracts. Start out with at least two contracts. That means $50 per contract so you can have one where you get out at 15 or 20, whatever percent, and then the next one you let it run to 50. And once you're comfortable with that and you've got a couple of trades or a few trades under your belt where you did that, then go ahead and get three contracts. Even though that pushes you up from $100, you know, $100 a week limit, maybe to $150 a week limit, but you already have practice with the whole proper sizing, scale out, leave runners. What you don't want to do is go in the other direction and get very small individual contract or very small multiple contracts of something that's 15% in the money probability. All right, so with that, I'll leave it. I don't want to make this video too long. I just wanted, wanted to cover that really quickly, and we will be looking into uh, a little bit more 101 trading using visuals in the next video, so I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have questions, go ahead and ask me uh, either in Discord or just comment on this video below. All right, have a good one.